I'm Heather, a lifelong Austinite and lover of art, culture, and local creative communities. Join me on a quest to interview engaging artists working with a variety of media, from paints, sculptures, fabrics, theatrics. Come along as we discover the meaning of blank canvas ATX. Hi everyone, we're here with Blank Canvas ATX and we're here with Celeste Sarabia and she makes incredible portrait paintings and we're here in her studio in Austin. So thanks for having us here in your home studio. Thank you, of course, it's no problem. I'm happy to have you guys. I am so curious about your origin story, where you come from and how you've managed to be in this city <laughs> making art. Yeah, sure. So I'm actually from a small town uh, called Anthony, New Mexico. It's, it's a border town, so it's in between and, uh, New Mexico and Texas. I started doing art because of my dad. He's been a professional carpenter his whole life and he'd always be at home drawing, sketching, mm -hmm. um, also comic books. He'd like to do a bunch of comic books mm -hmm. and my brother, he got into that. He, into, he got into graphic design and all that stuff. I just remember being really impressed by what they could do. And so I wanted to do the same thing. Mm. I think I was like in fifth grade or something. I would draw pretty much every day. Um, just, just copying the little drawings that my parents would do and my brother. And it wasn't until middle school, I think I was in eighth grade, I took an art class and the art teacher really liked what I was doing. He said that I was a natural because he taught my brother and he knew my mom and all this stuff. And in high school, I ended up just doing art full time. The teacher there, he's like, hey, have you ever thought about painting? I was like, no, that scares me. Mm -hmm. I picked up a brush and I, the first painting that I've ever done was a portrait. And it was black and white. And he was just like, this is amazing. Have, have you ever painted before? And I said, no, this is, I've only drawn with pencil. That's all I've ever done. And he's like, you really should continue that. So I, I did and I stuck with it. I usually say I'm a contemporary portrait artist mm -hmm. because I, I mix traditional portraiture and then also abstract. Yes. So I usually say I'm contemporary. Right after high school, I, I attended UT for a year and it, it wasn't for me. I ended up going to ACC for two years after and then made up my mind to go to Texas State mm. in San Marcos. That's where I learned, I guess, how to mix color correctly and how to play around and experiment with, with, with different mediums and stuff. Mm -hmm. So Texas State, <laughs> it was a really big thing in my life. They really made me the person that I am now or the artist that I am now. There is this one artist. Um, he's still alive right now. I can't really say his last name. It's Y-E-O, uh -huh. Jonathan Yeo. Uh -huh. And he's a portrait painter and he does a lot of this stuff where it's like, background comes into the foreground and the skin disappears a little bit and all that stuff and I really really liked what he was doing and I decided to try that but not only that I was also looking into Johannes Vermeer he's one of my favorite yeah, painters Dutch masters. yes definitely yes. I really really enjoyed uh, watching his I guess the middle class people that he was playing mm -hmm. that he was painting mm -hmm. and how he just 
he painted what he saw and the type of life that those people lived. And it was kind of like something switched in me where I was just like, this is what I want to do. I want to show people who I'm painting, not just like, oh, here's a person, but actually who that person is and what they like to do and and just really represent them. So it's right. Vermeer. Vermeer's been a really big influence on me. A lot of people can see a person's aura, but for me, I can feel it. Mm -hmm. And my, what my paintings are all about is trying to paint that energy into the background of the person that I'm painting. But doing that, I have to have a session with them. So let's say I'm gonna paint you. Mm -hmm. um, we select a date and I just have a one-on-one -on -one with you. We're just conversing mm -hmm. about whatever. Mm -hmm. And in the side, I'm taking pictures also. Just having a regular conversation. If that person is feeling sad that day for whatever reason, I'll catch that on camera. Mm -hmm. And I'll take a bunch of pictures mm -hmm. and I'll look over them and I choose the one that kind of best describes the type of person they were that day. Mm. And, uh, and then I put the aura color that they were projecting into that, into that portrait. Sometimes I start painting and it's not the right photo. And mm. I'm like, okay, I need to start over. So oh, I interesting, yeah. interesting. So there are, there are throwaways in your, yeah. in your repertoire. Yeah. Everyone has their flaws. No one's perfect. Mm -hmm. and by me being able to show the chaos of their aura color, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's kind of showing their minds are also kind of um, filled with a lot of things that have happened in their lives. Mm. And they're, you know, it's a bunch of experience, but that's what makes them the type of person that they are. Have you ever met a stranger and said, I want to paint you? <laughs> have you ever been that bold? I have. Um, I've had a couple of shows with other people in, in Austin and I have told them, I really want to paint you. I love the energy that you're giving off. The reason why I moved here is because of the Austin art scene. I think there's a lot of opportunity for artists here. Anywhere you go, there's just art. And I really appreciate that because we have that exposure. We are able to, I feel like, succeed here mm -hmm. a little more than other places. But the one thing I would like to see change is East Austin and West Austin happen just once a year. Mm -hmm. And that's for the fine artists. Mm -hmm. But I would like to see uh, more f like frequency um, of those large events to have um, to expose fine artists like like me mm -hmm. fine artists you have to kind of look for them and find their galleries but if we have more uh, lar large events like East Austin and West Austin studio tour just you know three times a year or something I feel like maybe we would be even more successful in that So I paint directly on wood. I actually make all of my panels. And what I do is I kind of seal it with mm -hmm. something called GAC, GAC 100. And it's, it's made for acrylic paint. Um, it's kind of used as a medium to kind of thin it out and make it dry, dry faster and all that right. stuff. Right. But it's also used as a sealant. And because I, my backgrounds are all painted with acrylic paint, I put a layer of that and it's clear. I put a layer of that on my wood. Once my acrylic dries, I paint a figure with oil paint. I've done the whole white canvas and it kind of throws me off. I, I kind of need a little bit of color in there to start. <laughs> For me, a blank canvas is 
uh, the start of something new and fresh. The possibilities are endless and it's, it's just something that you can ex put your, your feelings into and your worries and your strengths. And I feel like a blank canvas is that. It gives you the, the, the opportunity to, to be who you are, to, let, to just let go. Here we are in the studios of Akarash. We have been talking for quite some time already in some wonderful conversations about his art, but I would love for, um, for you to introduce yourself to the Blank Canvas ATX audience. Hello, my name is Olani Rashid Akindia, aka Akiraj. I'm originally from Nigeria. I'm Yoruba by tribe. So I live between uh, Lagos, Nigeria, and work there, and also in Frugafield, in Texas. Uh, Texas. How'd you get to Austin? Hmm. Austin is cheap the time I come here. Austin's what? It's very cheap. I don't have to live in New York to be a great artist. I don't have to live in Chicago to be a great artist. This is my own philosophy. It's good to go to New York. Then it is very, very good for you to step backward. Create your work here, and then boom, anywhere in the world. I've traveled to more than 150 countries in the world. Art make that possible for me. I've never dreamed of that. What's your education background? I graduate as biochemistry. Uh, biochemistry? I'm a pharmacist. You're a pharmacist. <laughs> By training. After I worked for two and a half years, a colleague of mine was a little bit ill. So towards the end of the week, uh, on, that was on Saturday, I took the car. I, drive, I drove down to his place to look for him and see how he's doing. So when I got there, he's fine. So I was asking him, do you know that easiest way to go out of their area? So he, so he, he pumped into the car, then we drove. Then I just raised my head and I saw a whole mirror and sculptures going straight on those walls. And I was like asking him, what is going on here? Then he told me that is Institute of Textile Technology. Textile and Technology. Uh -huh. You enter every, you see the painters, the sculptors, the textile, the fashion design, everybody was just roaming around doing some crazy things, seeing people. Post. That was 10 a.m. in the morning. Then I was in that space, moving from one department to the other until 10 p.m. That is the moment that I change everything. I said, I'm going back to school to study art. So one of the things that I want to do at that time was to show them, to educate them, to let them understand that art is beyond what they know. One of my uncles says this, he said, to go and think about this very well, if this is what you want. Then if you come back, we all come back in two weeks and it's say what you want, then we believe it is you. You need to believe it's what, that is what you really want. <laughs> I 
as an art student, you would think it is not expensive. It's expensive to be an artist, to study art itself. And we, this are also the moment taught me how to use and reuse things. The environmental impact of your yes. work is very green, yes. but it came out of a necessity. <laughs> um, that's what I'm right? trying. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. Using recycling or using materials which people or other students who left or anything, using it back into my work. And when they get to my work, everybody would like, what did you use? What is this? What is that? My background as a chemistry. Oh, of course. Come back for me to create my own colors. Come back for me to create my own brushes. So my strokes are different from normal strokes or brushes they use. Earlier when we were looking at your DNA and you were stapling and I said, well, what is that? You said paper. And I'm thinking, <laughs> how can that possibly be possible, paper? Yes. But that's because there's a process. So you're creating your own paints. I create my you're, own you're paint. and, you're, and, you're, and you're changing the materials through uh, yes. their, chemi their chemical composition. <laughs> The thing that really strikes me is the labor involved. involved. If I were to think about this even mathematically, <laughs> how each strip is sort of like hand woven. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not using a machine, correct? No. Right. <laughs> no. so... The photograph itself was taken from one of my performances. I call this, They Left Me Naked. The title of the piece is yes. They Left Me Naked. naked. And why they left me naked? I think I was looking at how many people or countries who have come to any part of Africa colonized them. After even the colonization of independence, it's never stopped. They still come back and taking natural resources. They don't have the power themselves as being the owner, even though they are independent, to say this is the amount that we are selling this gold. We are selling this diamond or we are selling this crude oil. It was determined for them. I want the stories of our daily life to always go through everything that I touch so that you can feel that our life is already difficult. And how can I bring that difficulties that we experience every day into that work so that immediately you see it you can see yourself as if you are standing in front of a mirror. My works, the way I do it, is a performance. When people, when you are doing performance in life, there is a kind of a process, one to step by step, stages by stages that you go through to make everything before it becomes pa finally of that performance presented. The same thing is my process of my working. Every step of everything we do is to be able to hold my audience captive in front of my work, that you hold your champagne in your glass and you don't even remember you have it to even put it in your mouth. If you don't take your audience along while you are doing something, then it's, 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 you should go back to your studio mm -hmm. and <laughs> research again because right. The idea was you are presenting something to people, to the community. You need to take them along. You need them to like follow you. The only artist that inspire me most in my life, that I will continue, maybe till day I will die and respect, is Leonardo da Vinci. He's an engineer. Mm. He's an inventor. He's a surgeon. I enjoy working in different parts of art. That is the reason why it's so difficult for me to say, okay, I'm just going to be a painter or a sculptor. I enjoy to not to nail myself or put myself in the prison of one side of art or creative. I want to explore. I like experimenting. I like difficult things. What is a blank canvas to you? It's a very big question. A blank canvas would be a second chance. You want to see how can I make it dynamic? How can I add to that love, that affection, that beauty that that canvas itself is looking at? 
Because when you look at the plain, plain canvas on its own, it's a work of art. Just by itself. By itself. So how do I make it more glorious? To any student, I say it's a gift. We go to the university, we go to anywhere to nurture it, to, to look for the rules. But those rules only works in the school. When you come out, you have to create your own rules pertaining to how you work, how you present it to the world. I've come to realize that if you have not done, if you are following those rules, nobody is going to see you. 50 years you are still working as an artist, they won't see what you are creating. But when time you do something and they start saying, this is crazy, you are crazy, you are mad, you should pop a champagne. I like this blank canvas thing. 